Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is Rush Spiegel, guitarist and composer, educator, and so much more extraordinaire. We met a few years ago, if all parts in the world played in Graz, Austria. Well, I grew up in a musical family. My father was an amateur uh, jazz trumpet player. My brother is a composer and pianist. He actually won the Battle of the Bands at the Hollywood Bowl way back in 1969 when I was a very young. And my mother played piano and my sister plays violin and bluegrass fiddle now so there was always music in the family but I didn't really have a good feel for it I wanted piano lessons and they didn't give them to me for some reason but I did take up the trumpet but I didn't really practice so I never really got any good at it until one day I saw my dad's he had like a music catalog and there were like pictures of different instruments and I saw a picture of a Fender Stratocaster copy I just saw that and I'd open it up and look at it and go that's cool I want to play that that. And then I put it away. I put take it out again and go, that's really cool. I really want to play that. I bugged my parents. I said, look, I really want to play guitar. They said, yeah, but you didn't follow up on the trumpet. I'm like, well, this is different. And so I worked weird part-time job one summer and my dad, I started off like on a classical guitar just and I took lessons at the local music store I'm like no I want to play electric guitar I want to play in a rock band finally I saved up enough money to maybe pay half of it my father put the other half down and I got like a really lame amplifier and I got a guitar and some I started playing with some friends and yeah that's how I got started on the guitar and I think I was about 14 years old back then Explain to me, what does the title mean? Chimera, I mean, I like I like wordplay. And chimera actually has a couple different meanings. It means, for example, it's like a mirage. It's something that you see, but it's not really there. It's also, there's a chemical term for it, which I'm, I, I forget what it is. I'm sure somebody may know the chemical term. But it's also a Greek term, and it goes back to a mythical beast, which the head of a lion, body of a goat, and tail of a snake, something like that. And the, why that was so fitting for this song is because this song, has many different sub elements because it's three different time signatures it has different time feels i mean it's in three it's in four it's in five and they all are happening kind of not simultaneously but very quickly in in succession it just sort of seemed like an appropriate title and thought for this particular piece of music and that was actually a steeplechase release in 2007 with a great band too uh, david smith who's one of leading younger trumpet players in new york anthony pinciotti who's plays with everybody We've got Gary Wong I mean these are all mainstays in the New York jazz scene Nick Mancini who then the vibraphone player who ended up going to LA and I heard he might be in Utah now we sort of lost touch last time I saw him was actually at the Gen Conference the last one we could actually go to and I think everybody plays incredibly well I hope your listeners enjoy it let's get a taste of the Russ Spiegel artistry this is Chimera a 2007 steeplechase release by Russ Spiegel my guest today Thank you. 
That was Chimera, a selection from the 2007 Steeplechase release from my guest today, Rush Spiegel, also the guitarist. You know, one of the great things about being, especially in New York City, is there are certainly opportunities for large ensembles and big bands. I had my own big band in New York for when I was living there, and we could always find places to play. South Florida, there are big bands, there are some opportunities, but it's much more limited. Most of my big band activities down here is more virtual, which really took off once uh, the pandemic hit and I've been creating big band, virtual big band videos with musicians from all over the world. I have a group I started maybe three, four years ago with some local musicians, which is an organ-based group, which, you know, as a guitar player, playing with an organ is just so much fun. So this one that we're going to listen to is from the organ group, Wait a Minute, 2019 release. So this one features Tom Kelly on alto sax. Jim Gazier is the organist. And Rudolfo Suniga on, on the drums. <laughs>
Wait a Minute from the Rush Spiegel organ group. And Rush Spiegel, guitarist, is also my guest today. We're looking at different aspects of your career and we were talking about big band and different places and spaces. And like so many jazz musicians, you did your dues and you were in New York for quite a substantial amount of time sharing the music on that too. Share a little bit about your New York days. I think that's when you got into some film music and shows too, right? I ha kind of have to preface it though, because when I was in Germany, I was actually playing with an organ player, Barbara Dennerlein, who's pretty well known. She has a number of recordings on Verve. I played with her for like five years, four or five years mm. before I came back to the States. And while I was Actually, in the band, I was playing with a saxophone player, Rick Keller, who now lives in Las Vegas. It turns out he went to the University of Miami as well. And I had started writing big band charts, and I actually sold my first two big band charts to the Hessische Rundfunk, which is the German radio band of Frankfurt. But I never got to hear them. And in Rick, in his incredible wisdom, said, well, why don't you start your own big band? What? I don't even know anybody. Music World is a small place in, in many ways. And so I managed to get together a whole bunch of musicians with help from other musicians. I started writing more and more big band charts. And as a matter of fact, in 1999, was awarded the Jazz Stipendium, which is the jazz prize for the city of Frankfurt. And I performed at German Jazz Festival there, which was covered by radio and TV. And it was an incredible experience. I moved to New York not long after that. And as I was slowly finding my feet, I'm, you know, now that I have all these big band arrangements, I'd like to play them. And I went to this place called The Garage, which unfortunately no longer is there. Talked to the guy who was booking it. I said, hey, you know, I write big band charts. You know, I have a band. I didn't, but I said I did. I actually, we, we got a gig there. It was like once a month, but it was very cool. And that gave me an opportunity to start reconnecting with musicians. I also played in like rehearsal big bands. There was a rehearsal big band at the Musicians Union. Some other people called me and I played in like this Russian big band. It was... You know, it's just a great place to where you get a whole bunch of really good musicians together at the same time. It's a great place to network and great place to make music. At a certain point, I just said, okay, I've got enough music. It's time to make a record. I did that. I, we recorded at the Wonderful Systems 2 recording studio. I had amazing musicians with me. Uh, again, David Smith, Tim Armacost, Charlie Porter, Rachel Eckroth, piano, Michael Camacho, a singer. I mean, if I told you how much money this thing costs to make. There's at least a car and a house somehow involved in this. Certainly do not regret it. And as a matter of fact, Big Band is something I continue to do and will hopefully always do. I'm actually working on a video right now featuring the great trumpet player Jim Rotundi. It also again features Tim Armacost. So being in New York was a wonderful experience for Big Bands. That's something I hope to keep going for the rest of my life. All right, so here is Count Up from the Rush Spiegel Jazz Orchestra 2006 release from with his large ensemble. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Rush Spiegel Jazz Orchestra, a 2006 release that was done in New York. So we'll take a quick time travel back to the Rush Spiegel Organ Group. And this one is entitled Miami Girl. Da -da -da -da, Rush just got married. I wonder, does this have any relation? And take us on your path from New York to right now. And, and what made you decide to leave and move on? That's an interesting question, Monica. I I was in New York for many years. I lived there for actually for 13 years. And one of the things that happened, if anybody recalls, is in 2008 when sort of the economy crashed. I was making a lot of money teaching privately. I had a my own place in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and I was doing pretty well. I had a the marriage that had broken up, you carry on, but it, that had been weighing on me for a bit. Around that time, a couple things had happened. I had just gotten my master's degree. I went to the City College of New York, and actually one of my professors was John, none other than John Patitucci. That was incredible. Also, I, uh, one of my great professors was uh, Scott Reeves. Actually, we have a record coming out that we recorded back in that time around 2006 is coming out on Origin Records, very, uh, I think in a couple months. While I was working on my master's degree, I also got a, a call to be a instructor on a movie, a guitar instructor. Well, that movie turned into a hit show on Nickelodeon and I was brought in as one of the music instructors. It was called The Naked Brothers Band, written and directed by Polly Draper, who was in things like 30 something. So I was actually had a second career working in film and TV as an actor mostly as a, a stand-in and as a you know background actor, but sometimes as a musician. You can see me uh, playing my guitar in What Happens in Vegas, and some other things. Cool story in between being an actor. It's kind of like what Hoagy Carmichael did. You know, Hoagy Carmichael, he, he wrote for songs, but then he went to Hollywood and he kept playing himself as the piano player 
in movies in a lot of the popular mu movies and wrote music for it and and it's a good marriage of you know music that's kind of cool that you got to play a musician yeah although i never actually played for real in there no there's there's one the was it the big wedding i'm, I'm playing flute at like the very end it was with robin <laughs> williams and stuff yeah it was kind of cool being around all, all this stuff and i also got into i did some music for some short films a couple of people who i work with from time to time financially if you know anything about new york it's a money drain everything costs money even if you're doing okay it's still not necessarily necessary that you're doing okay. Since I'd been writing music, I had gone for a couple of interviews for some colleges to teach. Obviously, without having a doctorate, it was really hard to be in the running. So I started applying for colleges, and one of the colleges I applied to was the University of Miami. And I got a call from the then professor, Gary Lindsay. He said, Russ, how would you like to come to Miami? We can give you a full ride and a stipend. What? You're going to pay me to go to school? Okay. I'm coming. In 2013, I came down to Miami and started my studies, and I ended up getting my DMA, my Doctor of Musical Arts, in jazz composition, which encompasses basically writing for any kind of ensemble, and it also included technological training. So, you know, I got to be pretty proficient in Pro Tools, working with all the a lot of equipment, because we had to do recordings every week. Since that time, I ended up down here. I met a girl in college here in Miami, and so long story short or very long story so Miami girl yeah I wrote that under the influence of my soon-to-be wife but at the same time I'm gonna say this I'd like to think it's a cleverly hidden contrafact I'm not gonna say what it is based on I'm sure some listeners are gonna figure it out and I'm sure you will as well still congratulations on getting married thank you so much finding a new space well let's see if we can figure it out this is Miami girl with the Rush Spiegel Organ Group, a 2019 release called Wait a Minute. And oh, actually, this particular song also has a very special guest, which is Brian Lynch, is oh. playing flugelhorn on this. And that's a good point because that's <laughs> a very, very special guest. All right, here it is Miami Girl. Oh.
That was Miami Girl with the Rush Spiegel Organ Group featuring Brian Lynch on the trumpet. This is a 2019 release. Wait a minute is the title of the release. If anybody listened closely and figured out what it is, a contrafect, as we mentioned earlier, means a song written using the vehicle of a existing song the harmonic vehicle of an existing song so when you hear it sometimes you realize oh i can hear this other melody in my head which means it's like in grade school we used to have those partner songs where you can sing the same song at the same time and it all fits together the answer to the big question is it's the girl not from miami but from a different place in in brazil go backwards again here to the 90s i love it that you were with barbara dennerline you know i I was listening actually to her a lot in the 90s when she was on worth recording were you with her then recording with her I never recorded with her. I did a couple of things on German television, German radio, and also uh, we did some stuff. We did something in Poland. Uh, we, we played the World's Fair in World's Expo in Portugal, played a bunch of festivals, like kind of all, all over Europe, but I never was on any of her recordings. I, I remember those on Worf. There was this time period where they were really branching out and, and getting a lot of artists and from everywhere. And then, of course, everybody figured out that they were not making money with it. And <laughs> it was all lost again. But we have a little bit of repertoire from, from that time. You know, talking about wordplay, I see the strain now through all your titles. So the next one being called Monkey, dropping the E in it, which is your nod to Thelonious Monk. And you can hear it in there. But this one also has a great band with it with Adam Nussbaum and Andy Middleton, Johannes Weidenmüller. So tell us a bit, a little bit about this 98 release. At the time, actually, I, I was living in, in Frankfurt, Germany. I was playing with Barbara. I had been writing music, but I'd never released anything. I had saved up a little bit of money. I knew Andy Milton through a few people. I knew Johannes, I think, also through some people because he was originally from Germany. Another friend of mine who passed away, Christoph Eidens, who was a great great vibraphone player based in Cologne. He had introduced me to Adam Nussbaum. Yeah, this was a big jump for me because I had to fly to New York. I actually stayed at my friend's place, um, who Torsten Duwinkel, who is a great German guitar player, toured with Pat Metheny for a tour. Does a whole bunch of stuff in Europe. And we recorded that at uh, Tedesco Studios in Paramus, New Jersey. I think it was all in one, done in one day. We had like one or two rehearsals. And I mean, these guys are phenomenal musicians. And the tune Monkey, yes, they, I mean, obviously I'm a big Thelonious Monk fan as well as a John Coltrane fan and Miles Davis fan, all you know, kind of the, the real heroes. And this was an interesting tune because when I was first writing it, I was expecting it to go somewhere completely different, but it didn't want to go there. And sometimes when we write music, we just have to respect that the song wants to do what it wants to do. This is what it wanted to do. And it was, at least to me, it felt very monk-like. And if something is monk-like, I could have called it monk-like, I guess, but monkey, it's monk. Key. And so that was the title of the song, and that also became the title of the album. Also, I have to say, in the 90s, I still had hair. That was on the cover of that particular CD. You will actually see a picture of me with hair. It is available electronically on CD Baby and elsewhere, but that's about it. That's very cool. So being the first recording, you know, was there any, like, going from the European jazz scene to the American jazz scene, just overall, did you notice any differences, similarities, or how was the transition? Well, I don't know if things are still that way because if in your new york you really are at the center of the jazz world there are fine musicians in germany really amazing musicians one of my sayings was even the bad musicians are great because you're creating music all the time there, there's no, you don't think about the hours you don't think about well i'm at somebody's house you can play in bars you can play in restaurants in germany i often came in across this unfortunate issue there's a thing called the ordnungsamt which is a sort of a an official part of the government which keeps order and order and jazz music don't seem to go exist very well together especially there if somebody hears you and they don't want to hear you they just have to call the ordnungsamt and you're you will be shut down or the the place you're playing at will receive a warning or they'll get a fine they've been warned before that was one of the reasons i left because i just got tired of biting this 
issues. Not that there aren't great, great gigs and great venues to perform at. The relaxed approach to art and music was less prevalent there than it is in New York. And in New York, you've always got people ready and willing to play at a high level if, as long as they can make it work. I think that, that was the biggest difference, just the willingness to just do it, not to say, well, what does this pay or how, you know, it's so far away, I don't really want to play. Or Also, I mean, that is true in, in, in Europe. Sometimes you have people, they're much further away, so getting people together is probably not as easy. Whereas in New York, everybody is, you know, you're just on a subway. Uh, that that's a good point just having this condensed central it's like silicon valley right if you want all the great people next to you experimenting there's the place to be well let's travel back in time here for a minute and go to monkey is a 1998 release by my guest russ spiegel today featuring adam nussbaum andy middleton and johannes weidenmuller here we go Thank you. 
Ghost Monkey from a 1998 release by my guest today, Russ Spiegel, who you also heard on guitar. Great composer, now based in Miami, educating from afar and all kinds of things. And we'll go back and close out with another large ensemble recording. And this is from 2017 and kind of brings together all your friends from all over the world. Really cool to see that because you had these different homes and places where you have these different roots and now you can draw from the best of the best from everywhere. How did this Twilight recording come together? After I had received my jazz stipendium, which is a scholarship, and at that time I think it was 10,000 German marks, and I went to New York City for nine weeks. I got to study with Mike Longo, the great who unfortunately passed away during COVID. He was uh, Dizzy Gillespie's uh, piano player for many, many years. Just a wonderful guy. And I also got to hang out and study with Peter Bernstein and that was very inspirational. Just a wonderful, nice guy. And I, I went to sessions, I hung out a lot at Smoke, jam sessions, and got to know a lot of people. Then I came back and because of my studies, especially with Mike, I had a bunch of arrangements. I'd written some tunes. And because of the pendium, I had a little bit of money. I was pretty close with uh, Jürgen Seefelder, who was teaching at school, the jazz school in Mannheim, Germany. He arranged for me to record at their recording studio. So I was able to choose a whole bunch of people who I, I always wanted to record with. Torsten Winkel's on there. Barbara Dennerlein plays on a couple of tunes. I've got Christian Myers. I've got Alan Jacobson, Alberto Menendez. And on this particular tune, Fourth Floor, this was a sort of a smaller group, all German musicians. That's uh, Jürgen Seefelder, the great tenor saxophone player. Sebastian Merrick, who's a wonderful, wonderful drummer, now based in Berlin, but originally from Frankfurt. Jürgen Reiter, who was a incredible piano player, also a teacher at the school, who passed away in, a few years back and Thomas Stabenow, and was also teaching at the school for many years in Mannheim. Pretty much a German production. I could say my name's German, so I guess I, that makes me part of it as well. It was released on the Double Moon Records in, in Europe. I'm quite happy with how the, the whole record came out. And the fourth floor, that one is called fourth floor because it's fourth intervals. So if anybody's trying to figure out how to hear those fourths, you know, just keep thinking the the wedding march over and over. Goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. If you hear a lot of wedding march in there, then you hear these distances of four notes. <laughs> Big bands back in Germany, now we're back in Miami. Of course, we need to get out of this whole mess somehow first. You know, we got to talk last summer and, and I was just seeing, checking up on what, what our musicians doing. And I remember at that point, you said one sentence, you said, you know, my musician career is over because it just seemed like at that moment, the idea of releasing music, performing just seemed to be canceled. How is perspective right now? Are we more positive again? We're, we're what are we looking at? Why I said that, because I, you know, I just released the album. I was just getting ready to release my second. I had like promo set up. I had all these great musicians. Everything was in place to build on on the last release because I had taken almost 10 years to release my that album. Wait a minute. I'd gone through a divorce and then I'd also gotten a little disillusioned with the whole music business and I was just getting positive about it again. Now I would say I am definitely more positive about it. Finding projects to do like these big band projects has been really great. I've really discovered also a love for the technological side. I still get some calls and I hope I get more calls to do writing and arrangements for different people. Being in South Florida, we kind of opened up a long time ago and I've been actually pretty busy with gigs. I'm sorry to say that for the people who are not working. That's the reality. So that's been really good. And also surprisingly teaching online isn't as bad as I thought it would be. I'll be teaching a couple courses at the at Barry University here in North Miami, including one that I created, which is called Jazz in Film and Literature, private lessons at the school as well. And who knows what, what's what's happening in the future. I really hope to get to do my next recording in the, in the next next couple months and get that moving again. We're going to see an avalanche of great music coming out. As you said, so many people really embrace the time. And actually, I'm a little scared because I have a feeling there's going to be some people just like playing unbelievably incredible music. <laughs> Send people to find all your cool things. What's the best places? YouTube. I have a bunch of stuff on YouTube. I put a bunch of stuff also on SoundCloud. If you go SoundCloud.com slash Russ dash Spiegel or hyphen, whichever you prefer. Invest. I mean, there's... I 
I even have a Patreon page. Right now it's not doing much, but I'm hoping to develop that. There's Instagram. Follow my organ group on Facebook. Of course, there's always iTunes, Spotify, CD Baby. All yeah. that good help, stuff. Help support, help, help support us musicians because we're well, all... Well, I mean, honestly, it is the, the best thing to do, you know, to, to find music and play it because it's been difficult. All right. Well, thank you, Russ, for sharing your stories and, and your insights. That was really fun to catch up and, and get to know your music more. We'll close out with Fourth Floor. This is from the recording Twilight on Double Moon Records, a 2007 release with Russ Spiegel and the big band. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much. And take care, everyone. Hope to see you all live somewhere. <laughs> Thank you.
Jazz. My guest today was guitarist, composer, educator Russ Spiegel. Tune in for Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and every Monday at 7 p.m. right here on WETF 105.7 FM in South Bend, Indiana, or online at wetfthejazzstation.org. Also find videos of previous shows on YouTube on the Monica Hersick channel. That's M O N I K A. H E R Z I G. Subscribe to get the newest updates. Thank you for listening.